So your pool's green. How do you even start clearing this up? Well, the good news is you don't have to drain out any water, you don't have to use algicide, and you don't need to spend the entire weekend vacuuming it out. Hi, I'm Matt from Swim University, and I've been helping people take care of their pools for over 30 years. Now, I know that algae blooms can feel like a nightmare, but it's actually a straightforward problem to solve if you have enough shock and you run your pump and filter long enough. So here's how to get rid of all that algae in just 24 hours. And be sure to follow each step in order so that you kill all of the algae. Step number one is brush and skim. You wanna get as much of the algae spores off your pool surfaces as possible. You want the spores floating in the water where your chemicals and your filter can start to treat and capture them. You wanna brush the walls, the floors, the steps, and behind any ladders or equipment. If you have a lot of floating debris in the water or leaves settled at the bottom of your pool, you wanna skim that out as much as possible. But brushing is the most important step for the algae spores. Step number two is to clean your filter and the baskets. If you have algae in your pool, you have algae in your filter. If you don't clean your filter before shocking your water, dirty water and algae will circulate through your system and then go back into your pool. So you wanna backwash your sand or DE filter or rinse your filter cartridge. If you have a DE filter, don't forget to recharge it with fresh DE powder. Then check your pump and your skimmer baskets. They might be full of debris. So you wanna open up the pump lid, remove the basket and empty it and do the same thing for the skimmer basket. Step number three is run your pool for 24 hours. You wanna run the pump and filter for the next 24 hours with your filter on the filter setting. It'll need to be running when you add shock so that you can start to filter out the dead algae. Step number four is adjusting your pH. Now getting your pH in range will help your chlorine shock to work better. Now while technically you can just start adding shock to the water without adjusting your pH, you want that shock to work as best as it can, especially if your water is really, really green. So if you don't have the time or the patience for this step, that's totally fine. But if you want your shock to be as effective as possible, fix your pH first. Test your water and check your pH levels. Now chlorine shock will raise your pH, so it's okay to keep it on the lower end around 7.2 to 7.4. If your pH is really low, add a pH increaser to the water. If your pH is really high, add a pH decreaser to bring it down into range. By the way, if pH and adjusting those levels feel confusing, I recommend checking out the Pool Care Handbook. It's a handheld, easy to use guide that covers everything that you need to know about water chemistry. And it even has a handy troubleshooting section to help with any water problems that might pop up. And you can grab your copy at swimu.com slash book or using any of the links below. Step number five, add shock. Now, you'll need chlorine shock to kill the algae. The goal is to keep your chlorine elevated to 10 times your normal levels for the next 12 to 24 hours. Now, adding too little chlorine will just drop it back down to zero. So always err on the side of using too much chlorine when you're trying to kill algae. Cal hypo shock or calcium hypochlorite is the most powerful chlorine shock option and the most effective at killing algae. Now, if your pool is over 10,000 gallons and you don't have a saltwater system, I recommend using Cal Hypo Shock. If your pool is smaller, use liquid chlorine instead. Cal Hypo can be way too much for smaller pools, even with algae. And liquid chlorine by the gallon is much heavier than a pound of Cal Hypo Shock. So it's a good option if you have less water to treat. Look for at least 12% concentrated liquid chlorine and make sure it's brand new. The older the chlorine, the more it degrades and will be less potent. Now, if you have a saltwater pool, I recommend using liquid chlorine or dichlor shock because calcium hypochlorite shock can cause calcium buildup inside your salt cell. You'll need a lot of shock to kill algae, all right? A standard dose of shock is one pound of cal hypo shock or one gallon of liquid chlorine for every 10,000 gallons. The amount of shock you need depends on the color of your water. So for cloudy blue or light green water, I recommend using a double dose of shock. For medium to dark green water, use a triple dose of shock. Now for really dark or black green water, I want you to add a quadruple dose of shock. Now for example, if you have a medium green water and it's about a 15,000 gallon pool, you'll need to add about five pounds of calcium hypochlorite shock, maybe even six. Also, Direct sunlight can destroy your shock's chlorine. So it's best to shock at dusk and let it work overnight in the water and add the shock directly to the water, walking around the edge to help it disperse. Your pump and filter should still be running at this time. Now when handling shock, I recommend always wearing protective gear like gloves, goggles, and a mask, and make sure that your skin isn't exposed. 
Cal Hypo Shock can damage vinyl liners if it settles and it takes longer to dissolve in colder water. So if you're worried about your liner or your water temperature, you can pre-dissolve the shock in a bucket of water first. Once you've added the shock, you wanna keep your pump and filter running for the next 12 to 24 hours to help it circulate. All right, step number six, check and test the water. The next day, your pool should be cloudy blue. That means that all of the algae is dead and it's floating in the water. If it's still green or even teal green, you'll need to repeat the process by cleaning your filter and shocking again. If it's cloudy blue, you can test your water. You still want your chlorine levels to be around three parts per million or even higher. And if they're zeroed out, add another bag of shock or a gallon of liquid chlorine because you don't want your chlorine to drop to zero and then the algae can just regrow. Step number seven is to clean your filter again. Your filter has trapped all those dead algae particles. So check your filter pressure. If it's 10 PSI above normal, backwash or rinse your filter grids. You'll need good filter pressure before you vacuum. Step number eight is skim, brush, and vacuum. Now that your water is clearer, you may see some debris that you've missed out on the bottom of your pool. Dredge it up with a skimmer net or remove as much as you can before vacuuming. If you've noticed any spots of algae on the walls or the floors that you've missed, brush those spots too. Now you can manually vacuum your pool surfaces. If you're vacuuming out a lot of debris, I recommend vacuuming on the waste setting. Otherwise, you can vacuum through your filter. If you need help using a manual vacuum, be sure to check out our other video. If you run your vacuum on the filter setting, you'll probably need to clean out your filter again at this point. Step number nine, keep the pool running. Run your pool for another 24 hours to remove the cloudiness. If you have an automatic robotic pool cleaner, use it now too. The water should clear up naturally on its own, but you can add a clarifier at this point to help speed things up. Step number 10, test and adjust your chemistry. You don't want your levels to drop and the algae to grow again, so be sure to balance your water chemistry. Test your water and start adding regular chemicals. And you can check out our other video all about adding chemicals if you need more help. And if you want more help with ongoing maintenance and easy weekly care, check out the pool care handbook at swimu.com slash book or by using any of the links below. That's it. Thanks for watching and happy swimming.